Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. I wanted to do a video on the next generation of consoles today because that is something I haven't actually talked about on this channel as yet. But I have been playing around with the PlayStation 5 and some of the launch games that have come with it. In this video you'll see some footage from Spider-Man, Sackboy and Astro's Playroom and I have been having fun with all of those. Obviously for me the big one is Demon Souls, which I haven't actually started yet. I believe my code will arrive tomorrow for that one and I can get stuck into that. But that was the big PlayStation 5 launch title for me. All the other ones have been a bit of a bonus in getting into the console at this early stage. Now it is a very good console indeed. I have a review up on digitallydownloaded.net of the hardware if you want to go and read that. And I have been enjoying my time with the games so far even without Demon Souls to enjoy. But when I look at what's coming, I do have concerns, and that's the point of this video, really, especially given some of the news that has come in recent weeks as well. I'll start with that. The news, the main article that I want to talk about in the context of this video, is one that came on Bloomberg a couple of days ago now, I think, and it's titled Microsoft Sets Sights on Sony's Home Turf in Console Clash. In it, the reporter cites uh, sources that say that Sony has been placing a great deal more importance on the US market after being quite disappointed with how the PlayStation 4 performed in Japan and that the company has also started to reduce its developer support teams in Japan while also cutting back on its rolling contracts at PlayStation's Japan studio. That doesn't mean that the studio is in any way in trouble, it just means that it isn't scaled to the same way that it was previously. Now, a lot of that article cites sources without giving names because of anonymity and stuff, but what we do know is that Sony has been shifting away from being a Japanese company as far as the PlayStation brand is concerned. We don't need a news report to observe how Sony has behaved over the last couple of years. It has moved its leadership from Japan to the US, and it has taken steps to limit the kind of Japanese games that can be released on its consoles. Now, I stopped short of talking about censorship here on this channel or on DDNet because I find that word loaded and the discussion around it to be incredibly sensationalized and not in a productive way. But in the conversations that I have had with developers and publishers that work with Japanese games and themes, there is certainly a resistance to certain kinds of games within Sony now. On top of that, for years, Sony has been going to TGS and making a real big show of being a big supporter of indies, of which obviously at TGS, being Tokyo Game Show, a lot of them were Japanese. There were big banners hanging over the top of the indie booth every year that proclaimed that Sony hearts indies, you know, the little heart, in, uh, in, the little heart indicator. And that was something that you couldn't miss if you went to the indie booth. It was very, very obvious that Sony was supporting that booth to get indies in to show off their games. And you would see a lot of PlayStation consoles at the indie booths as a result because Sony was very carefully and very actively engaging with indies to get a huge range of games onto the console. The last couple of years, however, it has been Nintendo with those banners. And, uh, and then for another example, while Microsoft of all companies held a virtual conference at TGS 2020, which was the online show because they didn't hold the physical event, Sony did nothing with that event. So Sony has really pulled back on TGS and its support of indies at that show. What's more, when you look at Sony's own input, it's quite obvious that the company has very little interest in the heritage that once led it to produce titles like Gravity Rush, Orishika, Tokyo Jungle, plenty of other games as well that came out of Japan and were wildly creative and enjoyable games to play. Now Sony is very much focused on the big blockbuster stuff that comes from its Western development studios. It has acquired Western developers. It works very closely with Western developers. When Kojima um, set up a studio to, after he left Konami, a lot of those developers were Westerners as well. Even Sony's big Japanese epic for the year, Ghost of Tsushima, was developed by a Western studio. So even Demon Cells, which was originally a Japanese game through and through, and you know Sony's internal Japan studio actually assisted with the development of that game, even Demon Cells is now being remade by an American company. Because of all of this, when you look at the Japanese developers and publishers, 
it is quite clear now that while they are developing for the PlayStation 5 and are supporting the console, that dominance that Sony had where it was the lead platform almost by default is being increasingly splintered as those same developers focus more heavily on the PC, the Nintendo Switch, or mobile games. I can't think of a time where the Japanese lineup for a PlayStation console has been more muted than it has been with this PlayStation 5 and what is coming for the console ahead, especially with regards to exclusives, but even just where PlayStation 5 is obviously the lead platform. It just is not the same this time around. Now that Bloomberg article also mentions that Microsoft is making a big push into Japan and I did want to quickly talk about that as well because there are all kinds of rumors that the company is sniffing up some pretty big acquisitions among the Japanese developers and publishers. I remember just after it made its huge acquisition of Bethesda, the rumor was that Microsoft was going to use TGS to announce that it has acquired Sega, which didn't happen, but there is certainly a very close relationship between Microsoft and Sega for certain titles at the moment. And it may well end up making some acquisitions like Sega, uh, but I'd be surprised if that comes too much in terms of the console's performance in Japan. The Xbox brand has never succeeded in Japan, and Microsoft has tried to do things about that in the past to no avail. You remember Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon, for example. Those are both very, very good games, and Microsoft was very genuinely interested in backing some other huge projects on the earlier Xbox consoles. But even after doing that, the Japanese were just not buying these consoles. There was just no traction for the overall Xbox brand, despite the the efforts that Microsoft did to engage with the Japanese development market. The reality is that the Xbox brand is so heavily weighted towards the provision of American entertainment content that it doesn't really appeal to mainstream aesthetics or cultural attitudes in Japan. A great example is until next year when Sony's MLB The Show series goes up multi-platform, Microsoft didn't even have a baseball property and relied heavily on EA and 2K partnerships to push its all-important sports games and unfortunately for its efforts in Japan basketball ice hockey and gridiron they have their fans in the Japanese community but they're certainly not the big ticket sports that baseball is in Japan so Microsoft couldn't even get that over the line in short I would be worried if Microsoft does make a big acquisition in Japan because those studios are going to be in a lot of trouble in the very likely event that Microsoft's current push into the Japanese market fails to succeed. I would not want my favorite developers or publishers to be acquired by, Japan, uh, by Microsoft. Now after saying all of that, I don't think Japan's games industry is in danger. I want to make it quite clear that this is not a comment about the health and performance of the Japanese games industry. The Nintendo Switch does great for Japanese games and there was a really heartwarming story on Nintendo Life this week that Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, that very humble little indie game, uh, has been doing really well on the console and has actually enjoyed double the number of pre-orders on the Switch than it has the PlayStation 4. It looks like that game is going to be a huge success for the developers and Nintendo's partnerships with third parties and it deserves to be. It's a very good game indeed. Japanese game developers are also embracing PC in a way that they've never done before and distribution on PC has really opened up where even though Steam has its issues with a certain types of Japanese games again there is alternatives and developers are working around these things and there is just this sense that PC is a good platform for Japanese developers again uh, in a way that hasn't really been done before. And of course the Japanese games community does love its mobile games. We often forget about this in the West because there is a greater level of, of hostility towards mobile games amongst Western players. But in Japan they like their mobile games. They do invest in their mobile games. The gacha mechanics are not quite as, uh, as controversial in Japan as they are in some other markets. So there's a, better, there's a better support for mobile games in Japan than we have out this way. So what I'm saying here is while the platforms that we play Japanese games on might shift, the presence of games from Japan is going nowhere. My concern here and the point of this video is more for video games as an art form looking more broadly at them. We've never had an artistic medium which is so overwhelmingly dominated by a single set of cultural attitudes as we do with video games. 
cinema is generally the one that people would point to because it has Hollywood and Hollywood is kind of huge. Yes, but there are also domestic film industries across the world as wide as Japan, China, India and Nigeria in Africa, which is actually the second largest film industry in the world, a fact few people are aware of. As much as Hollywood dominates the kind of the Western market for these things, the overall world cinema industry is very healthy and is very large and is very well supported by people as well. Obviously, literature, music, and the higher arts are also all genuinely global. And indeed, America shows less interest in a lot of those because they're not as easily commercialized. Video games, however, have been traditionally dominated by just two markets. There is the West, which is admittedly a broad brush with the US, UK, Canada, and mainland Europe. But they do tend to create similar cultural artifacts when making video games. Japan was the other market, but it's looking like the influence of Japanese games in the very important console space is about to decline further. There are positive signs elsewhere. China is emerging as a nation creating games with its own cultural spirit. And there are some really exciting things coming out of Latin America, especially Chile and Brazil. However, it does very much feel like the accessibility, despite the accessibility of game development, and the ability for developers to create games more easily, the range of ideas that have been expressed by games and put onto consoles, being the major distribution platforms that they are, is shrinking. And that ultimately is going to affect the creative tapestry that we can enjoy with video games. And it is meant to be this vibrant, growing art form, but in terms of the creative spirit of the video game industry, it does seem to be shrinking at the moment. And that's really disappointing and concerning at a time where traditionally a new generation of consoles brings a new creative energy to the industry. Anyway, I would love to hear your own thoughts on this. Don't take this as a sign that I'm not enjoying the PlayStation 5 or the games that it offers, because I really am. I'm actually really, really, really hooked on the Sackboy game. Look forward to my review of that. It'll come within the next day or so on digitallydownloaded.net. That is a really good fun game. One of the uh, platformers that I've enjoyed more than I thought I would. Um, but it is just natural that I have a particular interest in the Japanese games industry. And this is a topic that I have been musing on for a while now. And once I picked up the PlayStation 5 controller, I really started to think about it a great deal more again. Because once this reality of this new console generation has arrived, I've really started to think about what the implications are for games and development and games as an art form over the next generation so anyway once again sound out in the comments below like and subscribe if you do enjoy my videos and if you do want to support me on patreon even a dollar a month will be a huge help in continuing to grow this channel i've put a link in the description below here so you can support me if you'd like to otherwise check out ddnet for more reviews of playstation 5 things and hopefully demon souls very soon and we will see you next time